Autumn olive is a deciduous shrub that's a common invasive in the lower Hudson Prison region. It's usually multi-stem, though it can grow from a single trunk and grow to be as, to as tall as 20 feet. Probably its most distinguishing characteristic are these leaves with these silvery scales uh, that can actually provide a silvery cast. Even from a distance, you can see sort of this silvery nature to it, even as you're driving uh, your car by it. Um, the upper part of the leaf is dark green with uh, little silver dots on it, but it's really the undersides that are covered with these grayish or silver scales almost across the whole part of the bottom part of the leaf. This is what it looks like in its shrub form over here. In terms of its history of introduction, it's native to China, Japan, and Korea. It was introduced to the United States in 1830 as an ornamental plant, but by the mid-1900s, it was actually widely promoted for wildlife habitat and erosion control, and this is before we realized its invasive tendencies. It was also used for restoration of soils degraded by deforestation and mining, and was even promoted um, uh, at, in plant sales across the U.S. They even released a cardinal variety with prolific red berry production. And as you can see in this picture here, the red berries are edible and are used to make jams. And an interesting fact is that it's uh, got 10 to 14 times more lycopene than, than your average tomato. However, you know, it did escape control in the cultivation um, and, and efforts to remove it actually ended up creating more. You gotta be very careful when removing this, this shrub. Uh, because it can reproduce by sprouting, it can make matters worse. It's now extant or found in at least 38 state, states. In terms of its ecology, habitat, and impacts, it's found in forest edges, meadows, open woods, pastures, riverbanks, roadsides, streams, and disturbed areas, which just goes to show you what a successful invasive species it is to be able to be found in so many different types of habitats. It grows best on deep, coarse textured soils that are moderately well-drained and can tolerate salt and soil pH as low as four. It does provide habitat and is a food resource for wildlife. The leaves can be our forage for deer. Uh, it provides nesting sites for birds and the berries are eaten by both birds and small mammals. The fruits persist throughout the fall before drying up and eventually falling off the plant. However, you know, all of these benefits um, are, you know, far outweighed by some of the negatives it's having on some of the native plants. It can now compete and displace native plants by creating a dense shade that hinders the growth of plants that need lots of sun. And essentially, autumn of monocultures do not sustain insect populations during the growing season um, that songbirds require for, for nestlings to survive into adulthood. So while it is a food resource for birds, there are other uh, trophic cascade effects that are impacting birds in negative ways. In terms of its reasons for invasion success, it's drought, insect, and disease resistant. Um, as I mentioned before, it's highly tolerant of salinity, extreme pH, and heavy metals. Um, it can grow in a range of soils. It matures very quickly and can produce seed within two to three years of its life cycle. Uh, as I mentioned before, it can re-sprout readily after burning or and cutting, so you have to be very careful when you are removing it. Um, the berries are eaten and widely dispersed by birds, which is another mechanism um, for how it's invading certain areas and different types of habitats. It's not just around the original shrub. And it also has early leaf out and seeds persist long to the fall, meaning it has a longer growing season than a lot of its native competitors. In terms of its key ID features, um, in spring, you'll see the fragrant stalked white to yellow flowers that you can see here, and they're actually quite smelly and fragrant, um, very obvious if you're near the plants. Uh, but really, it's these silvery scales and the undersides of the leaves. You can see in this picture as well, that sort of wavy nature to the leaves. These leaves are usually one to three inches long with no teeth on them, meaning it has a smooth margin. Um, and they're alternate on the stems and obviously this more like oval shape to them. Uh, also the vibrant red fruit that comes out in, in the fall you'll see is also speckled with these silvery scales um, and just another ID feature to look at it and, and identify it as especially in the fall time. So uh, thank you for listening. And if you do want to learn more about these key ID features, make sure to tune into our field identification guide, which shows you some of these variations up close in nature and, and how it compares to some of the lookalike shrubs in our region.